So we want to talk about vectors in this video. So vector is, the word vector is related to the word um, vehicle. So a vehicle is something that carries you from place to place, and a vector is something that carries you from place to place. It carries you in a particular direction, a particular distance. So an example of when vectors might be useful might be, suppose we have a river, and the current is flowing through this river. We could use a vector to represent the direction of the of the of the flow of the river and the length of the arrow can represent how how swiftly it is flowing so a short arrow would rep represent slower current a longer arrow would represent faster current so suppose we want to um, row across this river in our rowboat rowboat if we decide to row straight for the other shore then this vector could represent um, could represent the act, our speed our velocity rowing so we have, we're rowing in this particular direction, and the length here indicates um, how fast we're going. So I think I drew this one so that it would have length 4 and this one for length 6. So I'm thinking that we have, suppose we have a current that's going at 4 miles an hour, and we can row at 6 miles an hour. We could ask ourselves, well, what direction will we actually go? If we're moving through the water, but at the same time the water's moving, well, it makes sense to add them in this way. If we go, if we row for an hour, we will have gone this far since we're going we, six miles, right? So we have uh, we have the velocity of six miles per hour, and then we could think during that same amount of time, the water that we were in would be um, would be rolling along with us. So we could just take this this vector, this arrow that represents our the our motion due to rowing and put on its head the tail of this vector that represents the current and then we would see this arrow right, representing our true velocity so we're moving through the water but the water at the same time is moving and so if we were an observer looking down on this we would see the boat moving along this line as it came along so, okay so this gives us a sense of okay vectors are you could think of them as arrows they have a particular direction a particular magnitude they don't have um, a particular starting point, so they can start at at any point. And to add two vectors, so geometrically, we just take the one vector and we put its tail on the head of the other one. Then draw, then then draw the vector from the tail of the first to the head of the second. Okay, here's another example that involves velocity. Suppose we have an airplane, and it's flying through the air, and the wind has a particular speed. So this is this is the wind velocity here. It has a speed, that would be the magnitude of the wind velocity. It also has a direction, that would be um, the direction in which this arrow points. So there's no particular no particular starting or ending point with the wind we're assuming is the same everywhere throughout this. We also have our airplane and we point it in a particular direction and um, the length here could represent the velocity. So this is the, the, or the length could represent the speed. So this is the velocity of the airplane. And so we would be flying along. You can imagine that as we fly through the air, the air is actually moving. So someone watching this from above would see our airplane move in this direction. Again, vectors don't have a particular starting or ending point. So I could take this wind velocity vector and just move it over here to the to the head of the the airplane velocity vector and then just draw the resulting vector or we call it the resultant the resultant vector just goes in this direction so someone looking down on it um, in the airplane we would think we had a heading this way right but then the wind is moving us as we as we go and so someone looking down would see the airplane moving in that direction and so vectors are very handy for representing things that are moving this particular velocities are also great for representing forces here I thought, well, suppose you have one of those aerobies or like a, a frisbee. It's got a little ring here, and each you and two of your friends put your hands on it in this way, and you all pull with the same amount of force. So what's the net effect going to be? Well, we can find out by adding these vectors. First, we could add this vector to that one by moving it over, right? putting its tail on the head of this one. And then here's, here's the force of another person. Let's, let's move it over. So we add those together just by putting them head to tail, and we find out that the resulting vector is just the zero vector. In other words, there's no net force 
on our little frisbee thing because um, all of the forces add up through vector addition to no net force. Well, here's another example where we have no net force. We have a we have a pendulum here. It's let's pretend it's a it's made of iron, and it's hanging from this is a very heavy pendulum hanging here from some string or um, some rod, and the this arrow represents the force due to gravity. So, so we could use this arrow to represent gravity. And the pendulum's not moving, so there must be a force that's added to that or counteracting it. Um, so that must be the tension or the force that's in its suspending rod. So um, the two balance together so that their sum um, is zero. We could introduce another force. So let's say we put our our magnet here, right, that starts pulling our iron pendulum this way, and the, then the pendulum is going to move toward the magnet. And that means this force is going to change not only its magnitude, because the closer you get to the magnet, the stronger the force you feel, but also its direction, because our position relative to the magnet is going to change. So we'll have a, have a different force here by the time it comes to equilibrium. By the time it stops, you can see that these two forces, gravity and the force due to the magnet, are being balanced by the tension in the line. So if we wanted to find how much tension there was, we could just take the vector that represents the force due to the magnet and the vector that represents the force due to gravity and add them up. So we just put, say, take this uh, magnetic force and put its tail on the head of the gravitational force, draw an arrow from the start of the first to the end of the second, and this is the net force due to gravity and the magnetic force. Since the pendulum has come to equilibrium, it's not moving. There must not be any net force on it. So the tension force would have to be exactly the opposite direction of those other two forces in order for it to be stopped. Okay, so vectors, they're arrows without a particular starting point, just a direction and a magnitude. They can be added by putting them head to tail. Um, vectors can also be um, stretched by, by multiplying them by some scale factor. So going back to our airplane example, um, suppose our airplane was going 20% faster, then we would get an arrow in the same direction, only it would be 20% longer. So you, we could represent that by some number like 1.2 times the vector, right? So, or as a fraction, say 5 fourths times the vector. So this would be, it makes sense, I guess, to take a real number times a vector, it just scales that real number. We could also, use, if we use a number greater than 1, then the vector is going to get longer. If we use a number between 0 and 1, then the vector is going to be scaled shorter. So the vector 0.5u or half u or u over 2, that, that would be a vector that's half as long as the original vector. And so we can scale them, either make them longer or make them shorter by multiplying them by a real number. So the same token, if v was our wind speed and the wind starts blowing twice as hard, we have this new vector 2v. Um, if it's only blowing 30% as hard as it was, then we have this new vector 0.3v. We could also take a vector times a negative number. For example, the vector negative u would take that vector u and just turn it around so that it goes in the opposite direction. So sum up here. Vector is a direction with a magnitude, so you can just think of it as an arrow that can have any starting point. It just carries you a particular direction, a particular distance. Um, it makes sense to add vectors, so like the boat moving through the water or the airplane moving through the air. To add them, you just put them head to tail. The result or the resultant vector carries the tail of the first to the head of the second, so you can just geometrically construct that. If you want to add um, these two vectors together, put them head to tail, and just do that. Okay. Um, it also makes sense to multiply a real number by a vector because that just changes the length of the vector or scales the vector. For this reason, we'll call real numbers scalars. So if you hear the word scalar, it's just talking about a real number in this class. Once you have um, vector addition and scalar multiplication understood, then you can define what we mean by vector subtraction. So if you have two vectors like u minus v, what does that mean? Well, it just we could just have it mean, it means taking the vector u and adding the opposite of v. So we could just find subtraction as adding the opposite. 
So if we have this vector v and this vector u, and we want to figure out u minus v, we would just take v and flip it, and then add it to u. So see, I took v, I flipped it, it still has the same magnitude, it still lies along the same line, but now it's in the opposite direction because of this negative. Now, since I've got them head to tail, I can go ahead and add in this way. There's another way to do this, though, which is kind of handy, and so we'll want to know both ways. The other way is just to take vector v. If you're going to add it to u, you'd put its tail here, but if you're going to subtract them, put them tail to tail. So I have u and I have v, I put them tail to tail. Then I just draw the arrow that starts at the head of the one I'm subtracting and goes to the head of the one I'm subtracting from. So here's u minus v. If I wanted to do v minus u, I would do it the same way, only I would go in the opposite direction, right? Because I would start at the head of u and go to the head, start at the head of the one I'm subtracting and go to the head of the one I'm subtracting from. Okay, so this is important then. We, we know how to scale vectors, we know how to add vectors. We have two ways of looking at vector subtraction. u minus v is u plus the opposite of v, so you just, um, you just take your you just take the opposite of v and you add them and that's one way of doing it. This gives you the same result though as putting them tail to tail and drawing the vector from the head of the one you're subtracting to the head of the one you're subtracting from. So just one more look at that. Suppose this is your vector u and um, this is your vector v. One way to do u minus v is to take start with u here and add a vector add minus v and just adding these two vectors then gives you the vector u minus v. So we're just adding u and the opposite of v when we do u minus v. But another way would just be to carefully copy v so that u and v are tail to tail. And then you just draw the arrow from the head of the one you're subtracting, which is v, to the head of the one you're subtracting from. So you get u minus v. You need to know both of these. In the next video, we'll look at this is this if this is all geometric we could do all this with say like a straight edge and a compass so the traditional tools of geometry is there some way to do this by symbols or by moving numbers around and we'll look at how to do that in the next video